Bun găsit, doamnelor, domnilor, sunt Marius Constantinescu. Invitata mea astăzi la ediție limitată este frumoasă, intensă pe scenă, incandescentă în toate interpretările ei și încă atât de tânără. Soprana letonă, Cristine Opolais. Cristine, thank you for being our guest. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. A really big honor and my first time, very sudden. <laughs> exactly. How do you react to this kind of stressful situations when you have to fill in for someone who's not well? Regarding taking risk, I'm taking and making risk all my career. So somehow um, I still try to manage it, but probably my age and uh, somehow my place where I am now saying, me dictating, be less <laughs> active yeah. with making risks and um, because I need my time more and for the, for the moment I need my, my time more for my child mm -hmm. because we are preparing for the school. So my long uh, being away is not so possible anymore, but I, I guess it's only for a few years and um, I, I really take this chance For example, also be there and study something new mm -hmm. uh, for, for the repertoire. And it was really fantastic experience just to go through in three days of 20-25 songs, just to understand what is good for voice, what is less good for voice, what is, uh, what is uh, more for my soul. And um, it's fantastic experience. So it's, and of course, it's a huge challenging. It's, it's a big challenge for me. Part of my question was also regarding uh, a moment in your recent history when you have uh, stepped in at the Metropolitan actually for Anita Hartig after just singing mm -hmm. Madama Butterfly you have entered in just a couple of hours actually in La Boheme. How was that? Don't ask me. <laughs> Don't ask me because I think that uh, sometimes you just have to close your eyes and jump. Uh, if you're not making risk you're not drinking champagne. I was not drinking nice. champagne. <laughs> This is to be quoted. <laughs> yes. I love it. I am not drink I was not drinking champagne after this day. Mm -hmm. I was sleeping three days non-stop and my manager and uh, my press manager was a little bit worried where I am. I was just sleeping in my in my apartment because it was crazy because somehow um, of course the first uh, I think everybody knows this story but it was really crazy because it was my first uh, not it was not my generally generally it was not my first butterfly in general but it it was my first butterfly at the metropolitan and um, um, it's It's had big success, so and you know to spoil everything <laughs> in the next day, it was not a good idea. But I have to be honest that the moment when Peter Gelb spoke to me, it was seven in the morning, so I was really hardly understanding what happened. And I, at that moment, I didn't understand really that HD means day performance matinee. So I was kind of uh, kind of new. It was my, my only second um, season at the Metropolitan, so I was not really. Uh, clear in my mind what I have to do so but my first reaction was no and I said no mm -hmm. and he said very sorry I think it would be fantastic for you but I said immediately Mimi is not my world you know I love Puccini but yeah. Mimi is not the role I'm singing in routine let's say yeah. and uh, for the moment it was one year being not in this repertoire so for me it was a really big challenge but uh, immediately after three minutes I put down the phone I thought like Why? Why you said I'm so stupid? You know, you are young. Voice is there. Just, just go yes. and do that. And then, then later, actually, it was not my mind which was working. It was just uh, intuition. I, I moved and I walked by intuition. And uh, I hardly remember uh, what I what I was doing on stage. But I just remember that everything was so for real because I saw for the first time my colleagues, I saw for the first time conductor, I saw for the first time the stage set. So for me it was everything for real. That's why I think it's had such a reaction on the audience because everything was for real. Also I falling down and it was bloody, my, my, my two knees was bloody. So it's so interesting, so it was so intensive. Uh, so intense really and um, I think it's Jan and I made history as I know. Yes. So to be Latvian singer who made history at the Metropolitan is not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can relax now, I think.
We are talking about uh, La Boheme, we are talking about Madama Butterfly, we are talking about Puccini in general. Puccini, the composer, you seem to have the deepest relationship with. What's about Puccini that makes him so close to your heart, so well suited for your artistic, for your vocal self? Uh, it's just my opinion. In, in my opinion, Puccini is the most free style composer and the most the music is most passion and for me passion and being free is very important and um, singing this music I feel that I'm very free you know I feel so warm and so hot and, uh, and love stories are really maximum you can imagine and uh, all this death at the end, <laughs> I love to play this. Yeah. So, and somehow, uh, audience, uh, I think audience like to see me die. So, <laughs> this is what I notice. And uh, no, just be honest. Just be honest. I'm, I, I'm feeling fantastic when I'm singing Puccini. Uh, but also Rusalka, also yeah. Dvorak is in my soul. I said many times already, Puccini is in my blood. So I just feel this composer really organic. in my, in my yeah. very organic. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dvorak is in my soul. When I'm singing Rusalka, I feel so special. I feel so inspired, so so light and so deep at the same time. And, and the music uh, is just the wonderful. music is wonderful yes. and not just sweet music. There yes. is a mixture of something Wagnerian, something mm -hmm. um, especially something, in the end. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, it's a drama. For me, it's not a honey and sugar story. You know, yeah. for me, it's a real drama. Uh, how 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 hard can be people to each other? How hard people can hurt you? How how much it's Damage, painful to yes, be in, in human beings. Mm -hmm. So, how come there is no Verdi in your repertoire so far? That's what I. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm working on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I kind of uh, I feel that I need a break to refresh my 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 brain and to refresh myself. And uh, I'm using small break um, as I have to be more in with my family now, uh, also to learn something new because I don't want to stuck in Puccini. I love Puccini and I have plans also for the new roles, but I definitely don't want to stuck, you know, with something else. So it's like. Um, it's like pity to be the best Mimi or it's pity to be one of the best butterflies. It, it's fantastic, but not forever, you know. So I just, I'm too young to to stay and just to continue just, just in one, one, yeah, in one uh, and it's very hard because in opera business somehow this cliche meaning means a lot. Um, there is a, not a lot of people who believe in you for something for something new. So only probably if you have somebody pushing you very well, like manager or some somehow. So like you're this. saying uh, if you did Butterfly or Manon Lescaut, everybody wants you to do just mm. Butterfly, Manon Lescaut and Rusalka. Uh, kind of. Kind of. Every second. <laughs> if there is a somebody more clever in the business, in the opera business, uh, probably they at least they are ready to try and to give you a possibility. For mm -hmm. example, I, I'm still dreaming to sing this demo now, you know, but they gave me this chance. I had one chance, but I cancelled because I was not well. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, artistically, when you feel very deep with some role, if you feel, if you know how to sing it and, and you like the music very much and story, you can give really something special on stage. But it's impossible to say to everyone, take me, mm -hmm. I'm good this demon, you know. Yeah. So it, it, it definitely has to be uh, some trust. It definitely has to come in natural way that somebody trusts and believes and also hear that I can do that well. And also there is a few, few other roles which uh, I'm dreaming for, but I am not growing enough for them and uh, uh, for this demon definitely, but uh, some of roles like Isolda, I know. It's yes. my dream and uh, I know that I will sing Isolde one day, but I'm just too young and 
too, too green <laughs> for this role yet. That's why I start step by step uh, with Elsa, which I will yes. do next season. I've seen that, yes. At the Covent yeah. Garden yeah. and uh, it's a big honor, mm -hmm. especially to be with such a colleagues yeah. uh, who will share the stage with me. So I'm really looking forward to, to Where it. Whoever will be watching this interview, there is a premium Desdemona waiting. <laughs> so yeah, please, tip, Desdemona, tip. Desdemona. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I send this this to everyone yeah who would you name as your absolute soprano struck now or general in general you're free to choose from now or from the past or no i don't have to choose because i have only one name Great. which is uh, just uh, not not only for me i think uh, uh, she inspired uh, many many singers and of course it's maria callas why i why i uh, admire her it's uh, because um what I think in about singing in general, also now doing recital and being so close to the situation, not so close, but just being in the situation when you have only piano, yes. your voice, you and audience, I think nothing... That makes you vulnerable. Yeah, but nothing is changing. I mean, when I'm singing my roles on opera stages, um, what is important for me, I cannot just separate. I cannot split uh, singing from feeling. Act, yes. Acting for me is a feeling. Probably it's not everybody who have this kind of gift because it's not mine. I just have it. <laughs> like, like uh, I like to, to act. Mm -hmm. And without acting, I, I'm stuck. So I'm not singer who are just singing. So the, the only the voice is not the instrument. For, for me, the colors which you bring from, from soul, from your heart, from your experience, from your dreams, from your feelings, Everything goes into the sound. That's why your sound shouldn't be beautiful always. If you gifted from God to have a beautiful voice, beautiful timbre and color, like Angela Georgiou, mm -hmm. I think she, she was born just amazing. Sounding amazing, you know, mm -hmm. fantastic. Somebody have it less. <laughs> and, uh, but everybody has the strong points. So for me, it's very organic to have different sound. That's why I love Maria Callas, because I can hear her soul in everything she sings. So, and for me, this way is, uh, just for me, is my opinion. For me, this way is uh, more important, more uh, intense, when you are speaking through your voice with many colors. You know, you're a mind reader. You put a lot of emphasis on acting. Would you sacrifice beautiful singing for credible acting? This was my question. So you already answered okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I read your mind. Exactly. Cristina Opolai s-a debutat în 2006 la Deutsche Staatsoper Berlin, în 2008 la Opera de Stat din Viena și la Scala din Milano și în 2011 la Royal Opera House Covent Garden din Londra. A scris istorie în teatru liric recent atunci când a înlocuit-o pe Anita Hartig în simulcastul internațional cu Boema de Puccini la Metropolitan Opera din New York, după ce, doar cu o seară înainte, cântase în Madama Butterfly. O puciniană intensă, de altfel, Cristina Opolais rămâne probabil cea mai veridică ciociosan a ultimilor ani.
What kind of emotional involvement do Butterfly or Manon Lescaut require from you? Well, Madame Butterfly, to me, much, uh, it's much uh, closer, of course, to my heart than Manon Lescaut. Manon Lescaut is not my favorite role. Uh, Puccini is my, one of my favorite composers. Yes. Chiu Chesan, in my opinion, is uh, the most complete women character. She's the most stronger. The most strong. She's the most women, the full yes. meaning, you know. Complete. Complete. She's complete women, as it has to be. Mother, woman, lover, everything. So to sing Butterfly for me is a, really something special. Uh, but also very hard because I'm mother, so I, I can feel through all emotions. And it's uh, disturbed sometimes because uh, you're just too emotional. But I think, I think um, audience should read, mm -hmm. uh, should read it. It's not a, it's mono opera and this is very theatralic role. Yeah. It's something you just have to live through with, uh, with the singing, with beautiful singing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the music is uh, provocating you for the big sound. And you need to give big sound from the very beginning. But then somehow you have to lost your sound because then very young girl coming on stage and you cannot sing Gran Ventura mm -hmm. on a sposa cost Gran Ventura Exactly, you're just 17 Yeah, but when you have people who are saying no, full voice, full voice, give a full voice then you try to explain about artistical way so it's, it's not everyone understand audience always understand mm -hmm. but not everyone from the business understand that you are right. So I just try to do my way and uh, I try to change it, it doesn't work. So I think uh, everybody has to stay in, in his way. For me, Butterfly is very sensitive role. Mm -hmm. There is a places where you really need to scream and cry. And, but a lot of them, you just need to speak. Yes. Almost. So it's very delicate role and the, the best and the, one of the most difficult roles. As you notice as well, there is a lot of fantastic singers who never sang this role on stage, only recorded. Exactly. The master, sopra soprani master, who could sing on stage. So there is, it's not so easy piece. And I like this. I like to do something what is not easy for everyone. So. Mm -hmm. We should really switch places because my next questions <laughs> would have been um, concerning some of the great sopranos of the past or, or the present that after becoming a mother would simply stop singing Butterfly because of the emotional uh, involvement required for this particular role. So there you answered again before me asking the question. I think that you, you need to become a mother to understand this role completely. Because I sang Chiu Chiu San when I was a young mm -hmm. uh, woman and I sang also being preg pregnant. Yeah. I made my big debut at the Covent Garden being preg pregnant with my, with my daughter and I sang Chiu Chiu San. Uh, it was already a different feeling and I also sang Butterfly afterwards. So, um, and it, I must say it, it was and it is three different worlds. And I, I've been lucky to sing it before, during <laughs> the, uh, the pregnancy. Yes. And uh, after. After. So I know something about this role. Yeah. I must say that. And um, you, you, you can understand for real till the end what means this character and this destiny and this situation only being a mother. Mm -hmm. Yenufa is different. 
this role I cannot sing yeah. and I cancelled everywhere possible because uh, musically is an amazing piece and I sang already when my daughter was born and it's really hard. Um, of course, if you are just focusing for the technique, uh, yeah, for the singing, view, yeah. it's fine. But uh, in my case, it's impossible because uh, as a person, I'm uh, very sensitive. I have a lot, lot of possibilities to to feel a lot of things. So uh, to sing, to sing, and to understand my role, I have to live through, and I don't don't want to feel this. Mm -hmm. What uh, Yenufa has. Yeah. For butterflies, it's a little bit different because she knows that for child, in misery, she's mm -hmm. living. It's better that yeah. the child is for child is better. So she's doing everything that her man and her child is happy. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's it's really amazing. She's amazing woman. It's a story about amazing women. Uh, with Yenufa, I also I don't understand her then how she can enjoy the love, how she can enjoy the the life mm -hmm. so quick <laughs> yeah. after after everything what happened so uh, i don't i don't really understand her as a woman you don't relate to I'm her at all i'm just suffering yeah. so yeah. Um, art shouldn't be only suffer i i think that to make a real art of course you cannot enjoy i mean you have to enjoy music of course uh, in general mm -hmm. but you cannot enjoy yourself you know, American way is enjoy. Yeah. To say enjoy, mm -hmm. never understood it. Yeah. Because you have to work and you have to. It depends what you are singing. If you sing Elisir d'Amour, enjoy. <laughs> but if you sing Madame Butterfly or Manon Lescaut or 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 Tosca, you enjoy, of course, uh, just but being on work. stage. But you have to work hard. So I think this not working. Also for the actors, mm -hmm. I think that the actors has to be hungry. You have to feel more hunger and, uh, and sadness mm -hmm. rather than happiness and fullness. How do you explain opera and all its drama to your daughter? No. You don't? I'm not, exp no, I'm not explaining. She knows what I'm doing. She never attending my rehearsals. Uh, she never attending especially my performances because when I sing la 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 she's doing <laughs> So she's very sensitive. About music. Yeah. Yeah. So I try my best not to to bring her 
to the opera. Well, later, I hope she will later she will come by herself. I hope not, but I hope she will have a lovely life yeah. without all this suffer. So it's it's enough. We have suffering just living and being in this world uh, to suffer twice. <laughs> singing very touching music and uh, to go through all these destinies with her character, mm -hmm. with her sensitivity, is not the best idea. Maybe conductor. Cristina Opolais a fost soția dirijorului Andris Nelson până în 2018, împreună o fetiță născută în 2011. Deși repertoriul ei se lărgește constant și face loc lucrărilor de Verdi, de Bizet sau de Cileea, Cristina rămâne una dintre cele mai convingătoare soprane puciniene. Spectacolele ei de Manon Lesco alături de Jonas Kaufmann sunt antologice. I did all possible during 10 years, during the 10 years, when we started together in Latvian National Opera, exactly. that he goes first and sooner mm -hmm. make his career. And I, 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 I did all possible and explaining to him that it's not a good idea if he's taking me and trying to push me mm -hmm. with his concert. Sometimes we did it, but for me it was very important to have my way and to build and to create my name. Because afterwards, when you have your name separately and your husband has his name, then you can work together. It was not easy. It was hard because sometimes we've been separate from each other two, three months, so it's hard. But it's also a very good um, example how to check your relationship, how to, how to check your... Your, I don't Mutual know. trust. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's 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 it has to be complete mm -hmm. trusting in case somehow also it's it's just it, more than being wife and husband. So it's you need to be perfectly friends to each other, colleagues. You need to understand completely. Since you are a singer, so focused on the acting uh, side on the stage, what happens when the chemistry between you and your stage partner? is lacking totally it's sad yeah it's sad because i am kind of uh, artist who needs a partner but i must say that personally mm -hmm. eight, 80 percent i'm i've been lucky with, with this with good partners i had a good partners mm -hmm. in general and of course for me one of the best memories is working with the Jonas. of course Mm, so our Manon Lesco was a special, also with the feelings and uh, and it actually was the first time when my husband was really nervous. Yeah, only, Why? One, only once. Yeah. I don't know. He <laughs> came. He never attending my performances. Never. Was he jealous? No, he's no. he was worried. <laughs> he was tense. Probably. He was worried because mm -hmm. all all kind of a uh, lot of people said that there is a, such a special chemistry ah. which you even you cannot you cannot play mm -hmm.
so. But we are artists with Jonas, and this is what I like about him. He's an amazing artist. He's the artist which for me means fullness, everything. Everything is there. So real, also so real, and so great actor. He's like Placido Domingo, you know, wow. as well. So I think it's something such a special. Um, only few, few, few artists has it. What do you do to unwind after a hard performance or a long period of stressful time? Oh, 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 oh. I think for real, I, I start to think about myself, about how I feel, what I want really. Mm -hmm. Do I want anything anymore? I only stop now. So it's a bit of soul searching. This summer brings me to the, to the atmosphere to think in general who I am mm -hmm. and what I, I want. Not what manager wants, not what what opera business wants and waiting. What I want, um, which means, of course, I worked hard. So when you work hard and non-stop, of course, it's important when you are going up, because uh, then you need to work non-stop. But there is a time when you have to stop, not stop completely, For but a while. just to be slower, <laughs> and uh, and. Um, because when it's hard and you're going from one perform one production to another one, uh, everybody expecting from you be special, if you're a big name. Yes. But it's not possible. And always in top form. It's not possible, because we are human being. We are, feel, you know, it's just the voice is not something you can. Yes. Manage. If you, you just, if you have less. You don't press the button. You have less, but if you always. Um, um, affecting by that, then you cancel every third performance. So very often you are not cancelling, you are just trusting your technique and thanks God I never stop my performances during the performance. But it's impossible to be perfect always, mm -hmm. as I said. And um, if it's very imp important from the beginning, then you should be more careful later. So now I'm in the position be careful. <laughs> And um, also to learn something, to make a step, you need to learn something more, something different, just to to absorb something, you know, to to go higher. 
there is no way to go straight away, there is a point that you need to, to go higher. You said uh, earlier uh, what the opera managers want. What the opera managers want is the same thing with what the audience wants? Oh, well, <laughs> it's a very interesting question. Never thought about, about this. I mean, I, I'm very skeptic in general. There is a good managers and there is a less good managers, the same with the singers. Um, good manager is a manager who are, of course, thinking about money. Yes. Because it's business. Of course. Uh, but also thinking about you. Yeah. Because in the end, I buy the ticket. Yes. That makes the money. <laughs> yes. So, but it's really important and it's not, uh, not possible that... Uh, so, it's important also that man managers understand about voices. So, if you, may, if you take a risk, so you cannot push go faster for a dramatic repertoire only because only with dramatic repertoire singing uh, Tosca and uh, Turandot, La Fanciulla del Vest, I don't know, Aida, Aida you yeah. are prima donna. Mm -hmm. But that's true. But you are a prima donna without I am Aida not a prima and... donna. There was never prima donnas, ever. It's just a great PR which is working for particular people. I see. So, there always was and it is many good singers. Mm -hmm. But people know only about few because the PR working very well. <laughs> and I'm saying that, that um, not because I'm one of them, it's just normal. It's always been like that. And uh, those people who are pushing by also not only by their, the talent, and they're talented for sure, yes. but it's only the destiny that somebody pushed more by PR and have good team around and somebody have, and have less. Uh, a label behind? Of course, it's always important. Yes. Also, the, the recordings, exactly. the labels, uh, just promotion, promotion around you is very important. It doesn't mean that they are bad artists, they're good artists, very good artists, but there is the same good artists around, probably. So, there is no prima donnas. There is uh, several divas who can be diva, but you know, I'm not very interested about, I'm not, let's say, I'm not very light and very. Mm. You need to love this, uh, this lifestyle to be a prima donna, to, to change your clothes and to, you know, to have photo shooting and <laughs> you need to enjoy this. Uh, so for this, yeah. somehow you need also time for resting. And it, but it's sometimes, 
it's hard even to, 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 to make some interview, but you must because this is part of your profession. So I would prefer to speak to you after my concert. Okay, we can speak after your <laughs> concert as well. Why you know. not? <laughs> yeah, so I know. for me, I'm not very easy with this stuff. So somebody likes it. Somebody born be in the yeah. opera business, like in the show business. And that's fantastic. And uh, But not it's not working for everyone. It's not working for everyone. I think the modern diva is really much more into being normal, being uh, uh, like everybody else, being a good colleague. The problem is that you cannot be normal if you are giving all the time something special to the people. It's impossible to point. be normal. You yeah. can play that you are normal, <laughs> but you cannot be normal because if you are normal, you are nothing special. <laughs> Doesn't work. Okay, it's been really, really lovely chatting with you. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. Thank you for your questions, actually. One of the most interesting interviews in my last 10 years. Thank you. Doamnelor, domnilor, ediția limitată de astăzi se închide aici. Sunt Marius Constantinescu, trăiți nelimitat!